I'm from the suburbs of Chicago. However, I'm used to the occasional weirdo on the Chicago CTA at night. For those unfamiliar, it's like our L train slash subway system. This was on the blue line. Here's some backstory. My best friend and I are both female and we were in our 20s at the time. We had went to see a concert in Chicago. After the concert, we had headed back to the suburbs. It was just past midnight and we were on the CTA home. My friend and I were seated towards the back of the car. There wasn't a lot of people riding with us. A few sprinkled throughout the train car. A few stops in and my friend is asleep and I'm scrolling on my phone when a man gets on. He doesn't take a seat, just stands by the doors. He appears normal. He's Hispanic and he had clean clothes. His hair was obviously done by a barber. He also had headphones in. He was a normal looking guy aside from this aggressive look that he had on his face. Everything is silent on the train for a few minutes. Then a man suddenly screams out something in Spanish. I assume that he's listening to a sports game on his headphones or something. But as I look up, the guy looks like he's going to burst into tears. When he notices me staring, he goes back to his aggressive facial expression. He then stares at me for a second, then looks around at everyone else on the train car. I assume he's just another weird CTA guy that's harmless and just go back to my phone. Things go quiet for a while, until he then screams out yet again in Spanish. The only thing I could understand that he said was your mom in Spanish. He looks furious. His shoulders are tense and his face starts twitching as he looks down at this younger guy sitting next to where he's standing at. I then make eye contact with the younger guy and he gives me the same, what the heck is up with this dude, look. The guy then turns his body to face the doors. He turns his head and then grins at everyone, like really creepily. His face was still twitching. Then he pulls out a flask. He takes a big sip and then yells so loudly that my friend jolts awake. Attention everyone! This is the MMA championship between Brock and McGregor! The guy then bashes his head violently against the glass doors of the CTA train then cracking the glass. The kid who was sitting by him jumps up and then scrambles across the car and then sits behind my friend and I. He screams out again. You have nothing on me, Brock. I am everything. You're nothing. I made myself into who I am. Then he bashes his head a second time on the glass doors, cracking both panels. As if he timed this stun purposely, the train stops at the next stop and he then wanders off the train into the night. Everyone kind of just looked in awe at what just happened. We all just started chattering about it. At the next stop, CTA employees looked at the broken glass really quickly, but they don't do anything and just send us on our way. I'm not really sure what even happened to this guy, if he was drunk or on drugs, but I sure as hell know one thing for sure. Crazy dude on the CTA who thinks he's Conor McGregor. Unless you're sober, please let's not meet again. I was 14 and very naive when this happened to me. I would have discovered online chat rooms and became instantly hooked. I had so much male attention that I couldn't contain myself. Keep in mind, I had always been the ugly duckling between my two sisters, so this had really boosted my self-esteem. I know it was stupid. I had decided to download an online dating app on my phone so I could continue whenever I wasn't home on my laptop. I had matched with a guy who we'll call Raymond. It was so refreshing to match with someone who wasn't in their 30s or over. He was honestly so hot too. Apparently he was 18. He had sent me some pics and he seemed fit. He had short black hair, was Hispanic, and big hazel eyes. We had decided to meet up one day. I had lived in some mobile homes in San Fernando, and there used to be a small playground on that property, so we had decided to see each other there. During the day we had planned to meet up, he had decided to tell me that he couldn't meet during the day, but that he would be free at night. 
This was obviously a huge red flag that I completely ignored, thinking he was in love. I said it was fine, and then two hours before we met, he had decided to tell me that he was actually 23. I was upset, and I didn't reply, but I decided to still go through with it. We had met around 11 p.m. by the gate, since it was a small gated community. I was relieved that he actually looked just like his pictures. He hugged me and everything seemed normal. We hung out at the park and then he asked if he could come to my house. Keep in mind that I never had anyone over at my house and I wouldn't even dare since my mom and sister were home and the walls were paper thin, but I didn't want to appear lame or scared. I took him to my house and we went to my room. We laid on my bed and we were just talking like normal. I remember that he had started kissing and taking off my shirt, but I told him to wait. He apologized and then he pulled out his phone. This is when things took a real turn for the worse. He started talking about Gore and how he was in love with a girl that was suicidal. Then he told me that he had sex with her and that she let him cut her with a blade in a bathtub. He said that he wished that he could still be with her. I had started freaking out at this point, thinking of how to get him out. He then opened an app on his phone and typed in bestgore.com. If you don't know what that website is, consider yourself lucky. He then started showing me videos on there and I could feel myself then going pale and freaking out. I remember that he then put his phone away after I stopped responding to his excitement while watching these awful videos. He then started kissing me, but I couldn't move my lips. At the time, I had self-harmed. He actually asked me if he could use my blade to cut around my neck. He knew that I kept it near my TV. I pretended to go search for it, but I said that I couldn't find it. He had seemed uninterested after that, and then he left. He actually blocked me on the site and then disappeared. I realized how deep in shit I was at the time. It could have gone so much worse for me. I also put both my mom and sister at risk that day too. I'm just really thankful things stopped and I now know to always meet up during the day in public. Stay safe everyone. This all happened when I was 16 years old. Me and a group of four friends were all hanging out one night at a friend's house who I'll call R. I know that it was about mid-September, so we had started a fire in a fire pit in R's backyard. After a while of just messing around, joking and talking, we all decided that it would be fun to play hide and seek in the dark. We all agreed to let the seeker carry around a flashlight as without it, the game would be virtually impossible. After some debating, we had decided that I would be the seeker. As the others hid, I had stayed by the fire to count. The property was quite big with many places to hide, so I gave them a minute and a half to go hide before then announcing, Ready or not, here I come! Now, I mentioned previously that the property was big, but I think I should give some more detail on that. First of all, there was R's house which had a garage next to it. Then close by there was another trailer that had belonged to R's mom's cousin. They had kicked them out due to drug use and violence. Then finally, there was a third trailer that I believe belonged to an uncle who had passed about a year before. So in total, there were three trailers, two of which were abandoned in a garage. Plenty of room to hide. As I began walking around, the silence really got to me and I began to get paranoid. I thought it would go away once I found somebody to walk with me though. I continued walking around, looking behind bushes, shining my light to the surrounding tree line and peeking under porches. After a while, I had found one of our other friends who I'll call T and he began looking around with me. At some point, I had gotten behind the first abandoned trailer that I had mentioned and I was now looking around the back of it when I had noticed part of the bottom had been ripped off. Of course, I made my way over to it, and I then peeked inside expecting to find some of my friends in there. However, when I got down and shined my flashlight into the hole, I was then met with the face of a random man. 
His eyes appeared to be sunken in, and his skin was pale and riddled with spots. His hair was thin and came in patches, and he had wild, bright blue eyes that appeared to be bloodshot. I let out an ear-piercing screech, and then flung myself backwards on my ass before flailing around to get up and go find T. Hearing my screams, T had come around from the other side of the house with one of our other friends. I then frantically screamed, Dude, there's a man under the house! And began sprinting up to R's house to get her parents. After screaming at them that there was a man outside, they then quickly followed me outside along with our other friends, who I guessed either heard my screams or T had found them. They then went to go check under the house. However, in true horror story fashion, once we got to where I saw the man, there was nobody in sight. R's parents then called the police, and when they got to the house, obviously the man was long gone at that point. However, they did find trash and a blanket in the hole. It appeared that the man had just been living under the house. After that, we had decided to wrap up the game and just go inside for the night. The following day, R's father had covered the hole. The main question I had about the whole situation is why the man didn't just break into one of the abandoned houses and instead chose to live under the house. I don't know. But anyways... I'm 21 years old now, and I still regularly think of this experience. This is a story about my Uncle Mike and his son Tyson. I had told him about Southern Cannibal and how I would like to submit their story on here, so he had sent it to me typed out via his email. His and my cousin's names have been changed for privacy reasons. This is all from my Uncle Mike's point of view. It was early June 2017. I was taking a road trip with my 9-year-old son Tyson to Dubai to visit some family. It was a long, stressful drive. My car didn't have working AC at the time, and it was incredibly hot that day. So we were a bit stressed out by the 4-hour drive. We had left later in the night, so we were still on the road by dark. I think it was around 1am when we were still on the interstate, and Tyson started complaining that he needed to use the bathroom. There was already tension in the car before this, but his constant complaining brought out a slight argument between the two of us. It was about personal stuff that I'd rather not share with the internet. At last, I saw the petrol station sign zoom past us in the roadway, so I drove off into the rest area. It also had a small building with two bathrooms and a couple of fast food shops that were shut down at a 24-7 market with no one in it, but that was it. There were no other cars parked nearby besides some big white pickup truck. As I had pulled up next to the building, Tyson got out in a hurry and then ran to the bathroom. I left the car on because I knew he'd be back soon. As I said... I don't want to get into personal stuff like why we had a bit of an argument, but it seemed we were at that stage where we weren't in exchange for words anymore. I figured the rest of the ride would just be silent. About a minute later, the back door then opened and shut. I wanted to say something to Tyson, but I didn't know what to say, so I just stayed quiet and drove off. I noticed the white pickup truck parked nearby was leaving as well. In fact, he was close behind me. I drove back into the main road and into the left lane. The pickup truck did the same. I then stepped on it a little, but so did he. He then started flashing his lights. So I had switched to the right lane thinking he was nothing but an aggressive driver. But as soon as I switched to the right, so did he. He was still flashing his lights, and I had pulled into the right lane and started to slow down. He sped up, still in the middle lane, and when he caught up to me, he had slowed down and lowered his window. I did the same, and he had started yelling something, pointing at my car. He looked like a really creepy, sketchy dude at first glance. I couldn't hear a word that he was saying, so he had then pointed for me to pull over to the side. I then told Tyson to keep calm. I was composing myself, saying, If this dude tries any funny business, I'm flooring the hell out of here. 
The pickup truck pulled up behind me on the grass, and the guy came out of his truck running to my car. I then put the car right back in drive as my heart was now racing, ready to drive and get the hell out of there. But then the man started screaming at my window. Wait! Wait! That's not your kid! And he then pointed to the back seat. As he said this, I was really confused and just said back, Uh, what? To which he then replied with, That's not your kid that you got in your car. Suddenly, the back right side door then opened, and I turned to see someone getting out of my car, not my son Tyson. I then got out of the car, screaming at the tall person who seemed to be a fully grown man, but he had already fully disappeared into the woods. I then looked at the driver in the pickup and then thanked him as I suddenly started panicking, thinking about what could have happened to Tyson. I got back in my car and then drove back to the rest area. The guy in the pickup truck followed me. We got back there in like 30 seconds to find Tyson waiting outside the rest area bathroom. He got back in the car all confused. I explained everything to him almost out of breath, as did the pickup driver. I thanked the guy one more time, before he then drove back to the spot that he was sitting in before. Tyson was so intrigued about what had just happened, and I was so disturbed that we were back on good terms again. We chatted the whole ride along the way, and told our family about it as soon as we arrived. I never even got to see what the person who got in my car even looked like. Honestly, maybe I should be happy that I never even turned around to look at them, because who knows what they would have done to me if I had actually seen their identity. Thank God that never happened. When I was 19, I went to a concert that I'd been desperate to attend for such a long time. I went with two of my friends. I'll call them A and B. B drove us and we were all sober and had a lot of fun. I live in Scotland, so not a large country by any means. Anyways, we had a 40 minute drive ahead of us, but it was obviously going to be slightly longer due to the influx of cars leaving the venue. As we got out and onto the main road, a car behind us started going crazy. It was literally honking every couple of seconds and trying to overtake us despite the lack of space. B was a responsible driver and still is, but at the time of this story she was a new driver and she was driving her dad's car as she was still in the process of saving up for her own. Anyways, this driver behind us was scary. B felt nervous but had to keep a level head and focus on what she was doing. He then suddenly opened his car door and had almost whacked a car next to him. He continued driving with the door hanging wide open, and the other cars were now honking at him. There was a street we could turn into, and B did this to try to escape the erratic driver. Thankfully he didn't follow us, but he did continue honking along the road he was on. We were spooked, and B was really angry at how reckless this dude had been. We had got a pretty decent look at him. He was a middle-aged man with dark hair and he was wearing a hoodie. We had phoned the police to report the incident. The police ended up actually tracking down the driver, but the scariest thing was the fact that it turned out that he wasn't intoxicated at all. He wasn't high or drunk. He was simply just an insane man behind the wheel. I don't know what ended up happening to him, and the story might not be that scary to others, but it was really scary to be on the road with someone so erratic and be so close to danger. This guy could have killed someone or severely injured them, or even himself. It's just so scary to think that something as simple as driving can really get you in a dangerous situation if you happen to encounter a psycho behind the wheel. Hopefully none of you ever have to experience that. Hey everyone, that's about it for today's stories. If you have your own story that you would like to send, you can send it in at southerncannibal.com or you can email it at southerncannibalstories at gmail.com. I look forward to telling your story. Have a good night or good day everyone, and remember to always.